want you to know that if you're going through something uh, that uh, you're not alone, uh, I don't feel alone. I think you and I, uh, I've told you this before, we have a connection, I love your support. Um, reach out if you need any help. Um, we all are doing the same thing. We're all searching for more good days. So uh, as always, uh, the Rudys are sending our love. I've been looking so forward to this. I've been fangirling about the fact that we're going to have Kelly Rudy on the show. Because I'm a big hockey fan, Oilers fan, from Edmonton. He's from Edmonton. Was like the goalie with the blue headband, you know, back in the days. Super cool and everything. And I thought, I just like, uh, as a hockey fan, I thought he's amazing. And then I found out everything that he's doing to bring awareness to the fact that a lot of people are struggling with mental health issues, especially at this time of the year. And that he has been struggling, because as you said, you've watched him play, you've watched him reach the pinnacle yeah. of something that we all fan around. I lived in LA when he was playing with the LA Kings and I had the opportunity to then work with Kelly Rudy when I was doing Seeking Stanley, the post-game show at the CBC back in 2011. He showed up for me every single game post game I'm a good like, dude I love him so right? much yes he's so good and he has agreed to join us now uh, Kelly Rudy it is like a great honor to meet you thank you so much for coming on the show Linda and Jody thank you for the invite for some reason I feel so much pressure because you you've made me now seem like I'm a good guy to other people which you are <laughs> we which know that you, you are are yes Hey, can we ask you, first of all, because, you know, a lot of people are shy to talk about mental health and when they're struggling, and especially men really don't like asking for help or mm -hmm. admitting that things aren't going great. So for you, what is your personal story? I mean, how have you struggled? Okay, well, uh, it's kind of a two-part answer, uh, Linda. So the reason why I decided to share my story, and by the way, I always say if you feel like sharing your story, great and it may find you a new community which i found on social media i, I really feel a connection to uh, the people that watch my videos but if you can't share that's perfectly fine as well we have a person that we love dearly in our lives and they're going through mental health uh, issues but they don't share and that's perfectly fine as i mentioned uh, so our my journey starts back in uh, 2005 the summer uh when caitlin our youngest daughter was diagnosed with ocd and anxiety and uh and so donna and i my wife we went on that journey with her uh trying to get uh, her help and uh, that was uh very very difficult like you know and all the people out watching that have gone through that with the love uh member or love family member just you know how difficult it is and uh the hours upon hours that uh, you put in work and uh, just trying to get to uh, your your the help for the loved one but so when Caitlin decided, well, after four years, she came to Don and I and said, hey, mom, uh, four years of extensive therapy, she said, mom, dad, I'm having more good days than bad. So what a profound statement for somebody at 16 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And so when in 2013, when she decided to share her story publicly, I thought, oh my gosh, this is the bravest person on the planet. And she was, and I still think that to this day. And uh, so, but, I was really worried about social media and all the bashers and the haters and so on. And much to my surprise, she only felt love and support. And so then when I was writing my book in 2017, I, I was writing about a whole bunch of different topics, but the very last day of writing, uh, I was at the author's uh, uh, house, Kirstie McClellan Day, whom you guys probably know, she's a lovely lady, mm -hmm. a great author. And, and I was walking out the door and I thought, you know what? If I'm going to share all these stories in the book, I'm missing, I'm leaving out the most important story. And that was when I didn't even recognize it at the time in 1992, 93, I was having mental health issues. Um, and so I sh shared that that happened to be the last chapter in the book. And I met Donna and Caitlin for dinner that night at a restaurant by our house. And I shared the transcript from that uh, chapter and uh, they were surprised to read it in there and they were also surprised to know that I was sharing that because for me I knew I was going through something but I didn't relate it to mental health until all of our work with Caitlin and then most recently well it's not recent anymore the summer of 2019 I started having thoughts again very similar to my thoughts in the summer of 92 and those thoughts were and I think some people can relate mine aren't necessarily about life 
They're about work related. And, and I always have these, what I think are rational thoughts or rational questions like, how much longer can I keep doing this? I've been doing it a long time now. Uh, the end's probably going to come at some point. You know, that's a, that's a fact. And, but when my thoughts went from those rational thoughts to irrational thoughts, like you're no longer any good, you better be perfect or you're going to get fired or, and as you guys know, on live television, yeah. trying to be perfect is impossible. So that's why I started sharing my story on social media. And I feel really good about it because I get, again, like Caitlin, I get love and support and I get so many beautiful messages. I wish I could share them with everybody, all the beautiful messages that, people, uh, you know, brings our community together. It's so heartwarming. Love it. The way you so openly shared in that most recent moment where you said, this is, you know, I'm not okay. And it's okay if I'm not okay, but I need to go in search of more good days. You're wearing the sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that initiative and, and what you hope to share with our audience in terms of um, being a part of your community. They're going to find Kelly Rudy in that community. Right. So this is from that uh, profound statement Caitlin had. Her and her husband a few years ago just shortened it to more good days uh, because as I've always mentioned in our videos, that's what we're all searching for. Uh, it reminds me of a text. I was texting Ron McLean a number of years ago about mental health and in only beautiful Ron McLean fashion, the very <laughs> last text he sent to me that afternoon was uh, inner peace. What a quest. And so I, I think mm. it ties together, right? We're all searching for inner peace. So we're all looking yeah, for more yeah. good days. Uh, and, you know, it's just interesting that in, in the videos that I share, I probably don't share how, like, you know, that one that you just showed, for instance, that was a day or so after I kind of had like a panic attack. Don and I were out at brunch uh, in early October. I was going to start work, I want to say, on October 11th. Uh, and it was our last uh, Sunday together before I was going to start traveling. And I knew something was up and I was having these feelings and thoughts and, and so on. My, the loop was going round and round and we're sitting at breakfast and or brunch and I just, you know, I started to tear up. So she knew how to get me out of it. And then I thought, you know what, I, I first of all, then I made an appointment to see the person helping with my mental health again because I need that. Uh, and I just feel that uh, for me, there's no shame. I, you know, I, I think there are a lot of people out there my age, I'm in my early 60s going through things that... We never expected anymore. I just, I didn't think this was uh, going to be a part of my life again, but it is in a big way. And so, you know, I, I have a great support system. I'll give you a little bit more behind the scenes, uh, Linda and Jody. So Saturdays happen to be my worst day for, because I get so worked up about uh, Hockey Night in Canada right. and in particular the pregame show, which, you know, uh, that one gives me great, uh, uh, trouble. So most Saturdays, well, not all, most Saturdays uh, at five to six, because uh, we go live at 630 Eastern time, I call Donna and she'll, she'll gauge how I'm doing. And I'll either tell, tell her I'm not doing very well, or I'm doing okay. And if I don't say anything really about that, then she knows I'm doing much, much better. Uh, and so that's how my Saturdays go. And that's what, uh, you know, I deal with, I, I will say, I haven't been in for two weeks, because I just have a little um, medical thing but I'm going back tomorrow but the last three weeks I was there I was doing really well on Saturday so I'm hoping that's what's going to happen this Saturday as well uh, crossing fingers for you you never yep. look stressed out you look cool it's a cucumber when you're, you're the best. doing the broadcast Holy. but you know you talked a little <laughs> bit about your coping mechanisms and and reaching out mm -hmm. and what a big kind of player your wife is in all of that mm -hmm. with the holidays here uh, it can be really stressful for a lot of people and, and not fun and festive and it's yeah. triggering. So do you have any advice for what somebody should do over the holidays when they're starting to feel themselves sinking? Yeah, ask for help or share with uh, the people closest to you. That's my greatest strength. So my kids, everybody, they know we talk about mental health. Uh, Donna, of course, is the biggest uh, thing for me. Uh, and, and it's interesting how the people close to you can maybe ask the same question as well. Like, how are you doing today? And uh, Donna will do that uh, in particular if I'm traveling and I'm leaving the house that day. And she may look at my face or in my eyes and go, how are you doing today? And she'll kind of have an idea. Uh, so that's what I would suggest to people around your family members and friends. If you notice some changes in the people, ask them how they're doing, because they may give you an honest answer that, 
You know, most of us say I'm fine, but oftentimes we're not. And so yeah. another thing I do, and I, I have shared this uh, a while ago on social media, but uh, Linda and Jody, so many years ago, I worked with Tony Robbins when I was in LA about my mental health. Mm -hmm. And I had this laminated index card that I carried everywhere with me. And I looked at it before the start of every game and between intermissions every game for five years after I worked with Tony. Mm -hmm. So, and when I went back to see the person recently with my mental health, I think in 2021 or 20, I went weekly for months and months and months. And we came up with the same plan. So now in my wallet, and this is what you mentioned, Linda, you said on Saturdays, you don't, you can't tell. I keep this little index card right on the desk in front of me in case I'm having a, a tough moment. And there's six little bulletin points that help me get through the day or the program or, you know, if I'm traveling somewhere, I'll just pull it out, out of my wallet. And, uh, it, you know, some people say, or my family have said, why don't you just put it on your phone? But that's not how my brain works. I yeah. like to have something that I can feel in my fingers and look at. And, and that gives me way more comfort than I ever expected. Like if you're, I have other people to share, like Caitlin and Hayden have these markets where they share or they sell their More Good Days product. And I've had total str strangers. And this is, again, the most heartwarming thing. I had a guy I remember last summer. He came up and opened his wall and showed me his uh card with his uh, bulletin points or bullet points and i thought wow how brave how cool is that that you know he just wanted to share that it really helped him so that might be something that uh, people can do heading into the holidays to give them a little bit of relief is it a personal bullet point list or can we know what's on yeah that i don't card? mind sharing okay. i don't mind sharing Please uh, do. breathe is the number one for sure that's for all people with mental health issues you got to you know get that under control and then there's some things that are definitely related so be bold and confident trust yourself you know what you're talking about so those three bullet points definitely tells you how i was struggling right with my yeah. own confidence during a show in which i should trust myself then there's one thing there that's too complicated to get into but the last <laughs> one the last one i love i love i love and i left it for the last one because seeing the person with my mental health he shared a line with me that I had never considered before. It was just, you know, work, 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 never take the time to enjoy. And he said to me, I deserve this success. Yeah. Never thought of it, right? Never yeah. heard to me. Yeah. And so that just gave me like a full rush. Right. Wow, that is very helpful. Thank you for that, Kelly. Before we let you go, yes, um, got this is a big night for Roberto Luongo. Yeah, Ring of is, Honor. Yeah, the Ring of Honor the tonight at the in Canucks me game. Is like, we got to talk about our Canucks, you Edmonton Tell people. Tell us very quickly what are your thoughts on Luongo. Well, I, I said it when he was playing for the Canucks when he came over from Florida. Vancouver Canuck fans, I don't realize how lucky they were to have him. He, I called him a winning machine. So I don't know what his actual winning percentage was as a Canuck, but it would be extremely high, one of the all-time best. And so it's an honor that he certainly deserves. And by the way, he's always remained a humble guy. Can I share yeah. one quick story? Please. Sure. Okay, so on uh, Hockey Night in Canada, a number of years ago, when I used to do all the Western shows, on a Saturday, we had behind the mat, or uh, we had after hours with Scott Oak. Love and it. that night, our guest was going to be Roberto Luongo. Well, the Canucks lost something like 7-1. <laughs> and we're thinking, oh, my gosh, if there's ever a night that a player is going to bail on after hours, tonight is the night. And secondly, not only was he our guest, he was going to put an on-ice clinic with some local goaltenders, some young boys and girls on the ice. Uh, and, and it was going to be a really cool thing. He showed up and he was in the best of spirits. And it was quite the lesson, I think, for a lot of athletes. And I know the kids really enjoyed it as much as Scott and I did. And I really respected him for his professionalism. Amazing. Love it. Love yeah. it. What a perfect story to end this on. Yeah. Kelly, please come back and visit us anytime. Open invitation. Thank you. And certainly when you're in Vancouver, yeah. stop by in studio. Yeah. I'd love to give you a hug in studio. Thanks for this. And by the way, you're amazing on air on those broadcasts, and you deserve it. And we are cheering you on. <laughs> you are. Thanks, tomorrow. Kelly. Have a Merry Much Christmas. Love. Much yeah. love, ladies. Happy holidays. You Happy too. Happy holidays to you. Oh, wow. I love him. I know, right? I thought I would, and I now I know that I do.
correct. Oh my goodness. All right, still ahead. So much for celebrating Hanukkah. A far right politician makes our what the hell is uh, wrong with people segment next. Uh, well, and uh, let's lighten up here just for a second with our viewing party uh, photos. This is for a Romers or Steamship gift certificate. Patty in Abbotsford. Hey, Hello Patty. There. We have Randy and Sook. And we have Susan and Thomas in Surrey. Hello there. Nice little tree. And we have Tom all the way from Winnipeg. People watching from all over. Hi, Tom. How you doing? All right, get in on it. Viewing party at checkmedia.ca. There's no second C in check, by the way. Checkmedia.ca. We're back in a moment.